when it comes to working with pixels, especially in Christmas lighting, one of the most complex topics and the hardest for people to grasp is power injection, but it's actually not too difficult. Hi, I'm David Henry from LearnChristmasLighting.com, and in this video, I want to teach you the basics of injecting power and then show you where you can get more info so you can make a great Christmas light display. Power is probably one of those topics, like I've mentioned before, that is really gets kind of complicated to people. And truth be told, if you ask 100 people in this hobby how they manage their power to their pixels, you're going to get 100 different answers. That might be an over-exaggeration, but not too much. So, what do you do? Well, I've got a couple tips to get you started. As I've mentioned in some of my other videos, when you work with a low voltage pixel like we do in Christmas lighting, like are all around me here, after a certain distance, you're gonna drop the voltage low enough that you need to add more power. Oftentimes, if you're working with some 12 volt pixels like I've got right here, that's gonna be around 150 pixels, maybe less, maybe more. And then you've gotta add in more power. So, how do you do it? Well, there's three basic ways to manage power with pixels. The first is single power at the front end, okay? And so this works pretty simply. You've got your controller or whatever your data source is, maybe it's some other pixels, and you simply take that data and add in some power right there at the front end, right there to your pixels. You just, you just connect those two, add them in, um, you connect You've got three wires on your pixels. You've got a ground that ties to both the controller or the data source as well as the power supply. Then you've got a data in that is only coming from your data source and you've got a power positive that only comes from your power source. Okay, so you can do that. And like I said, with a 12 volt pixel, often you're good for 100 to 150 pixels, but there's a lot of factors that um, factor into how far you can go exactly. But there's a great calculator. I'll link to a below that that helps you walk through that but that's not the topic of this video <laughs> getting back on track so we can do power at the front end or we can do power at the front and back end now when you're using a single power supply to power a set of pixels you can connect the power all the way from the front end to the back end and connect the power supply at both the start and the end now what this does is it about doubles the amount of pixels that you can connect on one power supply, on that one distance, because it's feeding from both ends of the power, okay? And so this is another great option. It involves making some adapters and occasionally doing some somewhat tricky wiring, but as long as you set yourself up and understand how it works, it's a totally valid option. In fact, this LED tape behind me, is done that way. It's a five volt tape, it's pretty dense, it needs that to run. So you can do power from both ends. Now, if you're gonna do this, one thing that's really important that you gotta know is if you have multiple power supplies feeding power, you always need to make sure that that hot, that plus wire, does not carry from one power supply to another. That's when sparks fly, okay? We don't want that. Please, please, please be safe with electricity, okay? Always work with things when they're off. Please, 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 please be safe. Um, that's a good disclaimer here. Anything you do with electricity that hurts you, I'm not liable for. And so you can feed from both ends. Another thing you can do is say you've fed power in, all right? They've, it's coming from the start. You get to your 100, 150 pixels. It's dropping too low. You need to add in more power. Well, you can just do another front end injection right there, adding a new power supply or the current one and just cutting the hot wire, um, bringing in the new power, and you're good to go for another 100 to 150 pixels. And one of the things that actually simplifies this is what's called a T. Now, this is one that I cut the plugs off a while ago, um, and, and I use it to illustrate how this works, because you can see here that I've got basically three connectors. This one comes from the pixels that were, the pixels that have the data, this is going to future pixels, so across it, and then from the bottom, and this is a DIY LED Express one, so other people may make them different, but from the bottom 
comes power that's being added in, okay? And so I could just add in power, use all my connectors so I don't have to wire anything as I'm setting up my display. I'm just plugging in connectors. And then I can add in power just like that, go for another 100, 150 pixels. So as you probably found from this video, it, it can feel a little complex when you think about power and, and when you start to think about, okay, I've got a lot of pixels, I gotta get power to all of them, how do I do it? But in simplicity, you can break it down to a few simple concepts. And I recommend once you choose a way that you're gonna do your power distribution for your pixels, whether that's using T's like this, whether it's injecting on the front end, injecting on the back end, injecting both the front and back end, um, it doesn't matter which way the power goes, the data does matter. You know, once you decide the method you're gonna use, then be consistent in using that same consistent method throughout your display and things will work really well for you. If you do want more information on this topic, I've got an article that I'm gonna post below on learning Christmas lighting that dives deep into power injection, how it works, and the different methods so you can learn all of that there as well or just read it so you review what you learned here. Also, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.